get that. You should know so that you get that. Because if you know that, you don't have any problem to write the molecular equation, to write the ionic equation, to write the net ionic equation. You can have three steps, you see? From now on, we're not interested about molecular equation, unfortunately. We have to move on. We have to move on to uh, ionic equation. We have to move on to a net ionic equation. So in order to do that, we need to know about um, we need to know about the compound whether that compound is soluble in water or insoluble in water. Um, anybody has a, a, a chemistry lab book here? Do you have a chemistry lab book? We have lab today, right? Yeah. Do you have? No. Okay. I wanted to pick, pick one example from the lab book because uh, there is some interesting examples out there. Um, for example, if you have your lab book, I'm just determining the experiment 21, okay? On experiment 21, uh, there's a question here. Uh, meta, what is Mikatis reaction, first of all? What's a Mikatis reaction? That is a double replacement reaction. It's exchange of ions. There's a question for you, which you have to write, actually. Copper two sulfates plus sodium carbonate. That's how they write. Why they write like this? Because they are thinking that, you know, the chemical formulas. And you also know the product. That's what they are thinking. Okay. So we have to solve a problem like this. Now, what what type of reaction do you expect? First of all, like this. If you have uh, if you have two compounds, what is the type of reactions you expect? Metallic reaction or single replacement reaction? Combustion reaction? It's going to be what? <laughs> it's going to be metathesis reaction. going to be metathesis reaction, right? This is going to be metathesis reaction. So, before I go further, I have to first write a chemical formula, copper to sulfate. What is the formula for copper to sulfate? CO2. CO2. Okay, it is in solution, it's in aqueous, plus sodium carbonate. Na2CO3. Na2 CO3. It's also aqueous. See? Uh, they are not giving you the products, and they are assuming that you're going to fill out the products. Okay. Now, if it is metatis reaction, remember we have a formula, a formula that is AX plus BY, right? Right. It's going to be AY plus BX. AY plus BX. That's that's how metatis reaction is. Exchange of ions, exchange of partners, right? So I'm going to apply this. I'm going to apply this. This is for metathesis reaction. Okay, I'm going to apply this directly here. It's my AX plus BY is going to be AY plus BX. So this is my AX here plus BY. It's going to be AY plus BX, right? So in that case, what would be my AY? Alright, it's going to be AY plus PX. What is AY plus PX? CUCO3 plus what is my PX? NO2CO4. NO2CO4. I mean NO2SO4. NO2SO4. Now, here is the here is here is the catch. <laughs> The catch is here. Okay, this is the product. This is the reaction. For you, what's important now? For you, what's important is to identify which of these two compounds are soluble or insoluble. Yeah, that that is why I ask you to study the solubility guideline. Without that guideline, you can't go further. Honestly, you can't go further. So, if I if I look sodium sulfate, what is my guess? Yes. Yeah. It's going to be aqueous or uh, it's going to be soluble or insoluble? 
What is it? Is it solid one? It's solid. Why? Why is it solid? Because yes. all compounds contain SO4 to the minus of half arm now. Strontium, barium, mercury, and lead. Say it again. Say it again. All compounds containing SO4 to the minus. Uh, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. It is soluble. I agree. It's soluble. But what is the reason? What is the reason that it's soluble? If you have sodium ion, which is uh, in uh, uh, alkaline metal. Yes. It's not because of sulfate. It's not because of sulfate. It's because of sodium ion. Why? Well, uh, no. If you have all alkali metals in ammonium ions, they are always soluble in water. That's what the solubility guideline tells you. All alkali metals, alkali metals are there, or ammonium ions are mixed with insoluble ions like sulfate. They're going to be soluble. So this is going to be equate. It's going to be equate. Copper, carbon, I mean copper to carbon. What is the chance of copper to carbon? Is it soluble or insoluble? According to the solubility guideline, why? Because uh, carbonate is an insoluble compound. Sorry, iron. And copper is not an alkaline metal or a Yes, yes, yes. Agree. Carbonate is insoluble, but there are conditions that carbonates can be soluble too at the same time. If sodium carbonate, ammonium carbonate, potassium carbonate, okay if they are mixed with alkaline metal. So in this case, copper is not a part of alkaline metal. So I am going to put S. You see, I'm going to put S. So without knowing that solubility guideline, it's really hard to find out this, right? Yes, S. Is S stand for solid? Insoluble, yes, S stand for solid. Meaning to say it is insoluble, yes. AQ stands for? Uh, equates. It is soluble. It is dissolved in water. But if it dissolves in water, there was no water in the equation. No, it is, there is water. I mean, it was, these are in solution. This was in solution. Oh. This is like experimentally determined. Okay? In fact, we're going to do the same experiment in the lab. So, which one is the reason it makes the solid? Uh, carbonate. The carbonate. The carbonate actually is insoluble ion. However, the carbonates can be soluble in a condition that when they mix it with sodium, potassium, lithium, all alkali metals, and ammonium ion. Besides that, it's going to be insoluble. That's how I memorize. <laughs> so whether it's a soluble or an insoluble ion, as long as it's an alkali metal, it'll be soluble. It will be soluble, yes. In most cases, 99%, yes. Yes. Uh, also, you have to be very careful when you see heavy metals like silver, like mercury, like lead. The chance of these metals are not solid. Most you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful. So that's also one of the solutions. They are not environmentally friendly. They are not easily be dissolved in water. They form precipitation. Okay. So if you see lead or silver, you know you have to think twice. Uh, there is an important factor. Whenever you make, after you find out this is, this is how the reaction should be. What is the next important thing that you always have to think when you do chemical balance. equation? Balance. balance. You need to balance the chemical equation. You always have to balance the chemical equation. Sometimes the equations themselves they are balanced right away. That's a good thing, but don't expect that always the equations will be balanced. Okay. Now in this case, if I see here, they are already balanced. They are already balanced. Good. So we can continue. What kind of equation is this one? Is molecular equation. Is molecular equation. But now we're going to move to ionic equation ionic equation because the reality is if something dissolves in water it has to form ions. Anik? When we're balancing, okay. should we concentrate at all or the for example we have CO three two. Okay. Should we concentrate at all at that or just the like the NA two? Uh well okay. when we balance in the equation we have to look at polyatomic ions first. 
in, in other words, we're not going to be balanced for oxygen. No, there is no four oxygen here at all. What is there? What is here? One SO4. One SO4. One sulfate. There's no oxygen here. There is sulfate here. What is here? Carbonate. There's no oxygen. There's a difference. There's a big difference between a carbonate ion and oxygen ion. Chemically, physically, they are also the different. Okay, so you have to know polyatomic ions first. Carbon. How many carbonates I have? One. How many carbonates I have? One. How many sulfates I have? One. How many sulfates I have? One. That's how, you see, the polyatomic ions are treated as one component. Okay? As one, uh, as one part. Okay, we're not going to divide. We're not going to divide like oxygen or carbon. We have to see as one component. And uh, sodium, we have two sodium, and we have two sodium here. Okay? Now, you see, uh, oh, oh, I'm going, I'm sorry, I'm going to write equates here. The reason why it is important to write equates, because if it is equates, it has to be broken down into ions. It has to be broken down into ions. In other words, if I say this is equates, this is going to be Cu plus 2 equates, and SO4 minus 2 equates plus, this is going to be 2NA plus equates, CO3 2 minus equates. In this case, I can't break into ions because this is solid. solid. So I will leave it as is. CUCO3 In all cases? Because it is S. In all cases? If it is yes. S, if it is solid, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. The only thing that you have to break them down if it is equates. Okay. That's the difference. Be careful. If it is S, yes, you leave it as is. It's one component. It is precipitation. It is precipitation. It is insoluble. So you don't have a right to decompose them, to break them down. <coughs> this is insoluble substance. This is solid. So I'll leave it as is. But when I come to sodium sulfate here, Na to SO4, I would say 2Na plus equates SO4 minus 2 equates. I'll break some down because this equates, it dissolves in water. If anything dissolves in water, it always forms ions. I write the equation like this. Maybe I can bring it, bring it up here. If I write the equation like this, it's called what? The complete ionic equation. From complete ionic equation, we have to move on to Nate's ionic equation. Okay? What's the Nate ionic equation tells me? A Nate ionic equation is you have to filter out those spectator ions. Meaning to say, we have ions here. They are on the reactant side, they are on the product side, but honestly, they don't play any role, any direct role in the process of the reaction. You can remove them. You can remove those ions. <coughs> what are those ions? You have to look. Like, is there any ions here on the reactant side? This is reactant. <coughs> this is product. Are here without any change. If you look, one is to an A. Right here, right? You have another 2NA without any change. SO4. SO4. We have SO4 here. We also have SO4 here without any change. So we're going to eliminate these ions. We're going to eliminate these ions. And we ended up with net ionic equation. What is our net ionic equation? Our continue. Our net ionic equation is going to be from the left hand side is copper plus 2. And CO3 to minus, right? From the product side is going to be Cu CO3 S. The whole thing is in here. A little bit down. Okay, so we we have whenever you write the equation, you have three steps. What's the first step? Molecular equation. What's the second step? Complete ionic equation. Okay. 
what is important for us to, uh, to do the complete dynamic equation and the dynamic equation, what's important for us? Uh, no, to find out the products. To find out the products. To find out whether these products are soluble or insoluble. If you don't, if you, if you can't identify uh, which compounds are soluble and insoluble, it's going to be hard to go to the second step and the third step. The second step is the complete an equation. The third step is an equation. That actually comes from here. Comes from here, whether this is soluble or insoluble. Okay? Yes. I the, yeah. Well, sometimes you know uh, uh, you don't have any solid here, so there is no any reaction. There's just mixture. Okay. There must be. There are three conditions for for you to have actually uh, any any equation. The first condition is you have to have a precipitate like a solid. That's the first condition. The second condition is uh, there must be a gas has to be formed. Some kinds of gas has to be formed. Okay? Or there must be the H or the OH product has to be formed. We didn't get to that point yet. I'm just doing the um, uh, solid part. But when you do chemical reaction, sometimes gas will be formed. That's one condition. That's one condition. Maybe I don't have time right now. I can add one or two examples next time. And we are going to make a decision. Is it a reaction or is it not a reaction? Okay? Sometimes this is not a reaction because all of them will be cancelled out. It is aqueous, it is aqueous. It's not a reaction. It's just you're mixing uh, compound with compound. So you can't define this as a reaction. Yes? Is it only for double replacement reaction without getting net iron Mostly, yes. Mostly, yes. 90% yes. For a double replacement reaction or a metatis reaction. Think about this. You have two compounds, right? Whenever you have two compounds, what kind of reaction is going to be? It is a metatis reaction, right? It's a metatis. Because the others, the others can be single replacement reaction or combustion reaction. Okay? Um, I will continue on Wednesday, okay? I'll continue on Wednesday. I'll bring your paper. I'll bring your paper again. Again, please uh, read whatever you read over the weekend about the solution.